Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at South America's most fascinating venomous snakes. I'm going to tell you what I know, but I'm also hoping you're going to tell me a few things in the comments as well. Let's dive in. This is a fur lance. This is it. This is the serpent. Oh! How am I going to do this? This is a very, very serious snake. It is the fur lance, and it is one of the longest for lances I have ever seen. There you saw Jeff Corwin, one of my all-time favorite people and probably my favorite herpetologist handling a fur de lance. I was laughing there, but honestly, I'd probably be just as nervous, if not more than him. Oh boy, here we go, okay. Wow. Yep, that's, uh, that's about the size we're used to seeing in Costa Rica. Look at that. They are big, well-adapted pit vipers. They have highly developed venoms. Toxic venoms tend to be tremendously hemolytic and in other words do lots of destruction to blood cells and so they account for a lot of bites in South America mm -hmm. as you know or Central and South America and so it's a really a formidable pit viper. Coyote Peterson looking at a fur de lance even he doesn't want to get bitten by this despite his love of being stung and bitten by pretty much everything. This is a baby fur de lance a venomous pit viper from South America. Unfortunately it doesn't eat on its own so this is when I have to assist feed. Assist feeding can be dangerous, especially with a knotty noodle like this with flesh rotting venoms. Pretty standard assist feeding for hots, really. I think it's quite interesting to see that because, you know, you, you might think these would be fun pets, but you could get into tricky situations like that occasionally. They manage to do it safely, but you can understand how different medical problems or veterinary, I should really say, um, could make things a little more complicated. By the way, it's called the Fer de Lance because it comes from the French Fer de Lance, which means spearhead or lance head. I just picked up two terrifyingly venomous snakes, and these are the Fer de Lance, which these have the worst bite of any venomous snake in the Americas. So if you was to get bit by this, stuff would start to fall off, and that wouldn't be no good. You need to keep your stuff. Not only that, they also end the most amount of people every year at about 400. So the pretty one right here, this is the female. Males are typically a little bit more drab on the species. Plus, I think he's going into shed. This snake is probably the ancestor to the golden lance head on Snake Island that everybody famously knows. This is good information there overall. I probably would disagree now with it being the ancestor of the golden lance head. Thinking has changed on that one. A lot of people think it's probably the Jararaca. But now we're going to see the golden lance head and see for ourselves why everyone talks about it. How to survive Snake Island. Oh, that's easy. Just don't go. For those of you who don't know, Snake Island is an island that's about 100 miles off the coast of Brazil. And they call it Snake Island because it's inhabited by only snakes, specifically by the Golden Lance Head. It's one of the most aggressive and venomous snakes on the entire planet. That guy always has a few errors in his content, like showing some garter snakes and stuff. Um, <laughs> But overall, I still like what he does. He's not claimed to be a zoologist or herpetologist or anything like that. But yeah, Snake Island is the home of the Golden Lancehead. It's the only place it lives, and it's a very, very interesting snake. And we are now officially stranded until tomorrow. That's right. We will be spending the night on the most deadly island on Earth. And with lethal snakes hidden beneath our every step, these specialized shin guards were our only hope of protection from their venomous bites. So there could just be snakes anywhere here. Yeah. Jimmy, what happens if one of these snakes bites us? Basically, as soon as the venom enters your body, your skin will start to melt off and you could die within an hour. Well, it's kind of terrifying to think that I could just die at any second. This is wild, bro. You know, for an island full of killing machines, this is actually very pretty. This is so beautiful from up here, man. If you fall right here, you're dead. Yes, I see that. Boys, be careful. You think that with a name like Snake Island, there would be thousands of snakes all over the ground. But after killing all the ground animals on the island, the snakes now hunt the birds in the trees, the island's only remaining prey. We are officially entering the jungle. At any point now, a snake could jump from the tree and bite us. I was. When they say that they ate all the ground mammals and now they prey on birds, they make it sound kind of like, not intentionally, but they make it sound kind of like it just happened, you know, 100 years ago or 50 years ago or something. Current thinking is that they were stranded on the island after sea levels rose following the end of the last ice age and over time the mammals died out from predation and they slowly adapted to feed on birds and a lot of people think that actually this means their venom, though it's incredibly fast acting, is probably more potent to birds than mammals or humans for example. This island has the highest density of venomous snakes in the world. 
Located 21 miles off the coast of Brazil, Snake Island, officially known as Queimada Grande, is one of the most dangerous places on Earth. Estimates suggest there are between 2,000 and 4,000 golden lancehead viper, one of the most venomous snakes in the world. They are a beautiful species, they're unique, that's the only place they live, and we often get these quotes about the density of them that live on this island as if it's just absolutely infested and there's, you know, thousands of these snakes. The truth is that the birds they feed on, many of them are migratory and, and other species that are generally in decline. So their prey now is in decline and the golden lance head is critically endangered. One dangerous aspect of working with venomous snakes which use their heat-seeking pits to find food is that anything that is warm inside the room could be perceived as its food. At first it was this light bulb and now it's me. You gotta love the black-headed Bushmasters and how spunky they are. Hey, it's better that it's the light bulb it goes for than your face, which would probably be the second target by heat. Also, I am cheating. I'm putting in black-headed Bushmasters. I know they're from Central America, but I just like them, so I put them in. <laughs> If you get bit by a Bushmaster Viper, this one being a huge one, it's 92% fatal. And with two inch long fangs, it could bite through its lower jaw just to get its prey. As far as I know, I believe that even with anti-venom, the fatality rate is upwards of 70%. And to my knowledge, it's because the venom has different components, meaning its effects are multifactorial. And it also varies a lot by region. So making an, an effective anti-venom for it will be very difficult. I'm pretty sure those were Atlantic Bushmasters and absolutely beautiful subspecies of the South American Bushmaster, if I remember rightly, let me know in the comments. They have some incredible adaptations, these snakes. They are the only egg-laying pit viper in South America, and there's not many vipers or pit vipers that lay eggs, full stop. Um, and that's probably an ancestral trait. They've probably been in a, an environment for so long, that has been so stable and warm for so long in the center of the tropics that they haven't had any selective pressure to give live birth. Live birth is good if you live, you know, at different latitudes. Um, so they've probably kept this egg laying trait as an ancestral trait from their long way back ancestors, which in itself is interesting, but they've also got like a little hardened tip on the end of their tail that they can rattle, and if they've got some leaves or something to rattle against, they can rattle just as well as a rattlesnake. But slowed down to 2,000 frames per second, the viper's awesome attack is revealed. The yellow eyelash viper. Armed with fangs as sharp as hypodermic needles, this two-foot male has two speeds, slow and incredibly fast. Love how they give it sound effects like a big cat, as if it's roaring and making cat noises and stuff. It is a venomous species, the golden eyelash viper. It's got a broadly hematoxic venom like most of the pit vipers in South America. Uh, and bites are rare though. It doesn't bite many people, even though its bite is medically significant. By the way, if you research this species, you'll notice that its Latin name is Bothriechis, whereas a lot of the other snakes in South America are Bothrops. And that is the same root for the word, but it's just because it's from Greek, a Greek word meaning pit. So it doesn't mean they're extremely closely related. Vou colocar ela aqui. Vem cá, meu câmera. Vamos ver se a gente consegue colocar ela aqui, ó. Ó. Deixa eu ver se ela fica, né? Ó. Que lindo, hein? Ó, filma aí, não perde nada. É pra vocês verem as cores aposemáticas desse animal. So you saw the beautiful Bonito coral snake, which is probably named after the Bonito municipality, which is, I believe, just to the west of the edge of the Atlantic forest ecosystem. So it's kind of south, central, southeast Brazil. Often we think of all these species as living in the Amazon, but the Atlantic forest ecotope is incredibly diverse and has incredibly high species richness and diversity for, for reptiles and amphibians and birds.
Coral snakes, as you're probably aware, are mostly terrestrial throughout a lot of their range, particularly in the US, like the Sonoran coral snake and the Eastern coral snake. That is the aquatic coral snake, which is the largest species and also has adapted to be perfectly at home in the water, which is really cool, I think, when you see a species that stands out from its typical genus. I really like that species, the red-tailed coral snake. I put this one in not just because the old nursery rhyme completely fails with that snake, but also just to show the variety in coral snakes. The true coral snakes, my Crurus genus, have their epicenter of diversity in the Amazon. Before we begin, let's talk about this nursery rhyme that everybody and their grandmother know about. That's red touches black, friend of Jack, red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Now we need to unlearn this nursery rhyme because that does not apply to our coral snake species. Yes, the feedback I'm getting from a lot of people is that the, uh, the old nursery rhyme really annoys them and that we need to stop anyone using it anywhere. I said in one video, oh, by the way, that only applies in America, and people rightly pointed out you get aberrant coral snakes in the US and you just shouldn't use this rhyme anywhere. Anything, you don't know what it is, just don't touch it. Uh, essa tá braba, hein? Oh, sai daqui, sai de perto, tô aqui perto. Não se aproxime. There you had a cascabel doing a cool pose. I'm pretty sure that's the nominate type. Um, I, I just find them fascinating, not because they're a rattlesnake. Rattlesnakes are fascinating however you look at them, but I find it fascinating that rattlesnakes, the crotalus genus, they are found all the way from Canada to Argentina. I think that's amazing. Amazingly successful animals. Cool to see as well that that one has a very similar pattern to the Eastern Diamond back. So you look for the striping on the neck to tell the difference. All right guys, so other than filming issues, um, it's a regular maintenance day here for us. So one snake we got right here, Crotalus dorysis cuminensis. Uh, this is just another one of the South American species of rattlesnakes that I have down here. Um, whenever I'm out cleaning their poop uh, and doing substrate in their bins right here, what I like to do is just soak them in a little bit of water. So we're gonna get this guy. The <laughs> guy's handling rattlesnakes with no shirt, no shoes and uh, no jeans on i mean that's just that's asking for trouble in the long run if you ask me i don't know anyway this is the jararaca it's a type of a venomous pit viper that is found quite widespread throughout south america in countries like brazil argentina and paraguay it is mainly nocturnal but is quite commonly spread throughout multiple different environments and while not super common in urban settings, it is responsible for quite a few snake bites per year in the areas that it's found in. The Jararaca is another snake that is capable of delivering a very, very dangerous bite, and does so on occasion, but it's also another species in the Bothrops genus, which is the most widespread and successful genus of pit vipers in South America and possibly the world. They are incredibly adaptable, incredibly venomous, and also broadly hemotoxic, so they cause a lot of injuries as well as serious bites, and, and people are right to be afraid of any snake that looks like any variety of lance head or relative. Alright guys, I'm at New England Reptile Distributors in the Venom Room with this species right here, the Bothrops Aatrox, aka the Fertilance, with Jesse here for another Venom Talk. Yeah, so this is one of the most medically relevant species that we know to science today. This is because the class of molecules known as ACE inhibitors were discovered in the venom of this species. And what are they used for? Treatment of high blood pressure. So it's medically significant on treating and saving human lives because... Yeah, uh, high blood pressure, uh, known as hypertension, is one of the most common ailments affecting Americans today all across the country. 
Scientists were able to find uh, that there's a specific toxin that can uh, decrease the blood pressure of its mammalian prey. They f Isn't that cool to see how calm those guys were handling one of the world's most feared snakes? They were handling it calmly, they were very calm, and the snake was very calm. There's no stress and danger in that situation whatsoever. And it's also a bit ironic because they were talking about high blood pressure <laughs> and everyone's very chilled out in a situation that would probably give me high blood pressure. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed those clips. I hope I got you thinking about a couple of things and perhaps a couple of things to tell me in the comments. If I did, please do like and subscribe and please do come back next week for more. Thank you.